quicker? Oh, yes. That one. Cool. Hi, everyone. So, yeah. This is, I think, the right one. Yeah, cool. So, I'm Dimitri, founder and CEO at Emma. Emma means, like, not the latest name, but in our context, it means Enterprise Multiple Management Application. So, we help companies to manage the different cloud environments, reduce the complexities alongside the, the, the bills, the egress costs, but mostly complexity. And today, I'm not like preaching the, the, the idea of our product, but we want to tell you that there are no happy paths, no happy scenarios to, to reach the cloud value. So, how it normally exists right now like, on typical enterprise or on typical market? We have a different sort of a cloud. We have private clouds, sometimes like mainframes, like these big mainframes uh, we just saw. Uh, sometimes we have public clouds in use, mostly for the cloud native guys. They never had these mainframes, they have been investing in, in this like, hardware, servers, switches, racks. They decided to build everything on the scratch out of cloud because of the fancy technologies, because of fancy applications. But the bigger guys, like the majority of you, uh, you realize that, okay, there is there's a cloud thing, like in public cloud managed services applications, there is private cloud that we have here, but maybe we can connect our private cloud to the public cloud and do the like rollouts when we need that. And that's how the like hybrid cloud appeared, right? And then we 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 acquired some someone one day, let's say the other company, the smaller one, cloud native different provider, different geography, and we ended up in a multi-cloud environment, right? So, normally, this, this path of the companies from being on-prem to being back on-prem starts with, with a moving into the cloud. So, okay, there's like a fancy thing, let's try to move into this fancy thing. Then we realize, okay, we have hundreds of engineers, a few hundreds of different cloud accounts, Azure, AWS, Google, and we need to optimize this. This is it, right? Because we don't really understand what is happening. We do not understand the right size and other things. So we start the optimization. We have these cloud strategies in place. We do the, 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 the certain like researches. We hire the guys, the best consultancies in the world. We use the tools. We pay for the tools. And that's what we call cloud transformation. We, we, we try to transform what we had into a bigger thing, proper thing that works better than it worked before. And then we realize, okay, that's, that's something that, that really doesn't work. And we get back on track. Even the cloud native guys, look at the data dog. My favorite example, the guys, they do the, the observability, they do the cloud management, they do the cost management, they analyze the data, and they've been born in the cloud. And right now they are building the third data center, right? Because the cloud is, is a very special thing. But why people go multi-cloud? Why, why they are multi-cloud? Because when you use the different providers, you have access to tons of the different services, tons of the different applications, and you can test your hypothesis faster. You can deliver your products to your end users faster. You can streamline this time to market thing. In terms of like efficiency, again, you don't want to overpay for your testing environment because this is like a useless piece of the infrastructure where you test the things and you don't want to pay the same amount of money as you pay for your production environment. So you use the, cheaper, the cheapest cloud for those purposes. And again, there are bigger companies. Um, for them, it's really important and sometimes it's like not really important, but sometimes it, it is literally necessary for them to be diversified. Imagine there's like a pharma company and they produce the drug to help people with the diabetes, right? And they do this blood sugar measurements a few times a day, five times, 10 times a day. Uh, thanks God, I don't know how many times a day they do this. But they cannot just rely on a single cloud because if anything happens, this time with a single cloud provider, literally someone could die, right? So that's why they have this diversity. They use multiple cloud service providers for these purposes. 
to, to be assured that their customers, their end users, they, they will get access to, to the application and application manager the sugar and they get the, the, the drug in time. So all these, I mean, strategic approaches, they normally start with a, like flexibility. So we want to be like flexible across the different providers, different tools, platforms, whatever. And then we realize, okay, if we, we exist in a different environments, then there's a huge lack of security. And we need to harmonize the security across the different platforms. And we need high-skilled professionals for this. And then it comes to the cost optimization. So it's too expensive, security, egress, high-skilled professionals, right-sizing. I mean, it's too expensive. So that drives us to the empty slide, which doesn't work. Again, basic, I'll do this a few times and I respect that. So to the, to the common pitfalls of being cloud, let's say multi-cloud, implementing the cloud strategy. And I like that because I had a number of conversations with, with different companies and what we, we quite, quite often hear is that, okay, we need to imply the, the, the cloud strategy. But what for? What for are you implying the cloud strategy? Why? Because of what? Because, because the cloud itself, no way that won't work, right? So you need the specific reason why you go not only multi-cloud, but let's say cloud, right? You should combine the different like approaches and mostly stay all the time agnostic. I'll skip the next slide because it will, will be another like five bullets that I need to click on that. But in a nutshell, I don't like this, this huge slide. So in a nutshell, I summarize that in the long story short slide. So look, more clouds really mean more complexity, right? So you have different clouds and you need to be like an, an expert there. Uh, if you look into the landscape of a cloud service providers, only from the perspective of a cost management tools that they offer, AWS, Azure, Google, you need to be like five times certified engineer to understand, even to understand how they measure the utilization of the underlying resources at their platforms. And they are quite opposite. Even if you go to AWS, if you, even if you, if you want to, to get a clue how the egress charges really work with the direct connects, direct links over the internet, I mean, it's like you need to scroll the page five times down the bottom to realize how they calculate that. At, at the end of the day, you, you would understand nearly nothing. So, on top of that, again, security, more clouds, complexity, security, high skill professionals, and on top of that, you have different bills, different agreements, different zones of responsibility, and a huge great area where no one is responsible for nothing. At the end of the day, when you have a problem, with your like connectivity between your private and the public cloud, you reach out to the to, to the guys out of AWS and they tell you, and we, we, we as, a, as, a, as, a, as a vendor, we have this problem right now. We're reaching out to AWS and we tell them, okay, look, we have a direct connect to you guys and we cannot get 100 gigabits per second. And they tell us, okay, it's not a problem of AWS because you have a port and this port is 100 gigabits per second. And that's the problem of a router. And the router is Cisco and we reach out to Cisco. Okay, guys, so router doesn't work. We need 100 gigabits per second. And they tell us, Okay, it's not a problem of a router, it's a problem of a provider. And you're like, really? Or maybe you're engineers. And we're like, okay, let's set up, set, set up the demo environment, test everything. We've spent nearly a year testing 100 gigabit per second interconnects between the providers, Azure, AWS, our own environment. So literally, it, it, it's a huge struggle, right? And nobody is responsible for nothing. And when you try to eliminate this complexity, when you do this sort of optimization, transformation, you name it, you realize that you're implying even more of this complexity. Because imagine there's like a customer, and the customer has a direct connect to Azure. Using the, the fancy tool, I'll hear one of the best networking companies, plug the guys, so really cool, guys. Uh, so they have the direct connects to Azure. It, also, the customer has a direct connection between X to, to the VMware environment that the customer has. On top of that, of course, we have the automation Ansible, Terraform, Gloomy, whatever, to automate the deployments. 
and different deployments, containers, clusters, applications, legacy, into the cloud environment. And on top of that, we have cloud cost optimization, observability, Kubernetes cost management governance. We use the spot instances because we want to reduce the cloud bills, right? And the data dog because we want to export the data and reflect in the fancy dashboard to approve our, let's say, next year budget with management. What's that? It's way too complicated. And what we do believe makes sense when there is a single, like multi-domain platform that exists that actually leverages the network underneath of this solution, on top of that provides the ability to automate the deployments, automate the things. On top of that, it should have the login, the API, powerful API, so you know what you want to import, export, how you, it, it, it can help you to interact with the platform however you want. And on top of that, this platform or that platforms, they should support the different services that exist on top as an overlays on the cloud service providers. Because the cloud service providers, we do believe right now, are turning to be the commodity, like electricity, internet, whatever. So we, we don't need to be that, I mean, inspired with the cloud service providers itself. They work to make your application up and running. So in this sense, you should leverage the providers like the commodity to deliver the happiness to your end customers. And important thing, I heard it, uh, at, the, at the presentation before myself, we should remember every time that there is no cloud, right? It's someone else's computer. So we use the servers, even with these fancy technologies like lambdas, functions, is the computers underneath of, of, of it. And we are building the layers of abstractions, then we equalize them, then we build another layer of abstraction, which is way too different from, from the one that we had before, way too complicated, then we try to equalize this layer of abstraction. It happened with, I mean, it, it's been happening all the time since the beginning of the technology, since like internet, we put different networks, then we built TCP IP to unify this network. Then we built a browser to, to help people work with the internet. Then we built the clouds, and right now we are equalizing the clouds. So again, in a nutshell, it's just the computers. So that's basically it. My 20 minutes is over. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking. Thanks. Okay, I'll be I'll be there in case of any questions. We have a booth, table, whatever, so feel free to reach out. I'm happy to. Thank you.